former NFL, or Nick Grison, played for uh, the Giants and the Denver Broncos and really uh, doing a very unique thing, uh, PFS, uh, with young players in the NFL. And it's always about life after football, but you try to give them a head start. He's kind enough to join us for a couple moments. How you been, Nick? I've uh, been great, Rich. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, likewise, and appreciate a couple moments. And, uh, th- you know, it's funny, too, because we had the draft a couple weeks ago. We had a draft about a month or so ago. And it's interesting what you're doing and and how you're helping, like, I don't want to say more or less the younger players or the new draft picks, but ultimately trying to just get their mindset right for the future. Because, look, you played in the NFL close to a decade. You know how fast the money goes. This is more of a, a situation to kind of protect uh, players a little bit going forward. Just talk a, talk a little bit uh, in depth about what you're doing right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, so with PFS, it's a, we do especially risk underwriters is what we are. And um, Since coming on board about a year and a half ago, I was able to develop some unique let's call them policies that really benefit the player to say, here's a way that something, there's things that never existed before because I don't think the industry of insurance or disability actually knew it existed within a player's contract. And it actually affected me. It was what it's called as a split contract. And mm-hmm. what a split contract says is if you're injured as, and you have a split in your contract and you're put on injured reserve, your salary will go down from, say, A down to B, which this year a rookie – is going to make four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If he were to become injured and placed on injured reserve, his salary goes down to three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars and he incurs a loss of one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. So and this actually happened to me in my eighth year. I had a split and really you just I never had any leverage. I only had one team off me a contract and it had a split in. I'd never been on injured reserve and but I had to take it because there was nothing else out there. Right. And sure enough, I blew my knee out. And uh, in my in my eighth year, and ended up losing 50%. Um, at the time, it was 50% of my salary. So this is something I thought, you know what? The, I, and, and funny enough, I reached out to the NFLPA and I said, "How prevalent is this?" And they sent me some information. And I, I kind of broke everything down. And last year, um, you know, like this, 58% of the NFL had a split in their contract, and over 25 million dollars in salary was lost by players. Wow. I mean. That's a big number. And see, the biggest thing is a lot of players, they're coming in, they're 20 years old, 21. They got their agent, and the agent doesn't explain to them what a split is, that they got a split. Because anybody drafted after the second round is going to have a split in their contract. Wow. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong. When you blew out your knee, uh, that was during training camp, right? You were with Denver when you signed with the Broncos, correct? Yep. Yeah, that was, I was with the Broncos, and I was there. I mean, third day of training camp. I mean, wow. just a fluke thing. It was an open open field tackling drill. wasn't hit by anybody. The guy cut to cut to my left, and I cut and planted and and just popped. Did you did you subsequently get released within a week, within a uh, within a day, within a couple weeks, within a month? Do you remember? No, I that, that, that I wasn't released because that was an injury that was big enough that they knew I was going to be out for a whole season, so they couldn't ever try to gotcha. you know, make a settlement that with makes me. Sense. So uh, yeah, so they put me on injured reserve, okay. and I ended up, you know, collecting my my minute, my split salary is what we call it. Um, and, and this is something that what the what the what this policy does is for a rookie, he's got that hundred seventeen thousand dollar let's say carrot that's out there that if he gets hurt, you know, he's going to lose. Well, he can protect himself for for listen to this, three thousand dollars. He can protect one hundred seventeen grand for three thousand dollars. That's that's I mean point seven percent of his salary. I mean, which is a no-brainer. How do you look and at a player? It, I'm just curious real quick. I didn't mean to cut you off. How do you look at a player like Miles Jack? Because he had basically an insurance policy if he fell, uh, I think, to the 45th pick. I mean, is that – does that – are those apples and oranges with what what you guys are doing with some of these rookie players? Like, is that more of him just protecting himself because of his injury history coming out of college? So that was – that was well, that was something that he had, he had purchased – prior to his uh, his senior year happening. What they call that is a loss of value. And that's something that, you know, college has gotten bigger into. Um, the hard part is, is, you know, when you got, you know, one team and 20 guys have a loss of value policy, there's not really 20 guys that are going to get drafted. Um, it, what, what I'm doing is very different because – this is black and white. Mm-hmm. Either you're on injury reserve or you're not on injury reserve. The problem that comes in with loss of value is, well, how big was that injury that you sustained? And there's so many other factors that you look at coming to the draft that can cause a player's stock to drop. I mean, you look at uh, Laramie Tunsil. Yeah. 
for example. I mean, the guy was originally, originally before any of these drafts or um, these trades happened with uh, the Rams and Philadelphia, I mean, Tennessee was number one, and they all these guys had him going number one overall. Yep. And so if, if all of a sudden he bought a policy that's loss of value, the thing is for injury, and, and you know, now that all these, tra- these picks get traded, I mean, there's a need factor. You look at Aaron Rodgers, how he dropped in the, you know, a long time ago. You know, there's all those things that, that can come up that, you know what, there's just maybe not a need for that player, even though that, you know, Kuiper and McShay are saying he's a top five guy. Yeah, that, and then it, obviously, you know, your Twitter account, you want to make sure that our, uh, you don't your give Instagram. Your yeah, 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 our Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nick Rice is joining us uh, for a couple moments on this Thursday. No, that's a great point. Um, you know, years ago, it was the life expectancy of an NFL running back was three to five years, and an NFL player, seven years. Then it was five years. Then it was three years. Uh, for, I think for any player to play for five or more years in the NFL, that's a testament because, I mean, you can speak to this. On any given play, any given play, you can be in training camp, you can be lifting weights. On any given play, your season, your career, it can go down on, on one tackle, right? On, on, on one run, one carry, one hit. Um, it, it just, it amazes me, though, that I, I hear a lot of stories about NFL players who made a ridiculous, and it's kind of, trailing off a little bit, but I still want to get your thoughts on this. A ridiculous amount of money, and it just seems like, financially, they're just not equipped to handle that. Is there is there something in place that you guys do with these young guys to at least educate them a little bit? Hey, you're 21, you're 22, you're 23. You, you've got potential to come into a lot of money. Handle it wisely. Yeah, well, I, it's funny you, you can say that, you know, until you're blue in the face. And, and you know, I don't have as, as close of a relationship with as you know, the agents uh, would or their financial advisors. You know, we we play more on the side of here. Here's one component of what a financial advisor and agent should be, um, you know, advising his player of taking care of. You know, if I'm going to go to a player, and you know, the funny thing is, the amount of money everyone thinks that the NFL guys are making a ton of money. I mean, yeah, I'd say this top 20 percent are, but for the most part, I think guys are like you said, three years. I mean, if you've got an average salary of four hundred fifty thousand dollars over three years, you take, you know, it's only they're only going to get fifty percent of that. Yeah. And so you're walking out, and you've got maybe let's say seven fifty in the bank. Well, you've that's without spending a dime while you've played. I mean, you know, if you say you don't protect that hundred seventeen thousand dollar nugget that has in a split contract, you know, that hundred seventeen thousand dollars when you come out, I made the transition. Try to come out of the NFL in your first job making one hundred twenty grand. That's difficult. Yeah. So that just adds more value to what we're trying to do. And yeah, if I had if I had more time in front of these these players, it's you can kind of talk to your blue in the face. But at the end of the day, it's the choices and decisions that they make. And I also turn being a college player, going back to the college and saying, guys, you need to get them prepared to be able to come to know what a val- the value of a dollar is. When you come out making your your four hundred fifty thousand dollars as a twenty year old kid. You don't have to live on a budget. You don't know, have to know what it costs for a gallon of milk or for eggs. You know that's a, that's a thing that when you when you can expend spend at a certain level, it's just crazy. When and and also you've got a lot of guys doing things for you throughout college, sure, throughout yeah. the NFL. You know you never really have to take that responsibility. Nick, is there a misconception with uh, the active roster? You know, when we talk about active roster and roster bonuses, it seems like a lot of people, uh, well, well, you know, he's got these incentives kicked in or player A, if he's on the active roster. I mean, they forget you got 53 on a roster, but only 46 can dress. How does that affect the player? Yeah, so there's 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 something new that the, uh, well, the owners, they're billionaires, right? So, I mean, billionaires are they're probably pretty smart to be able to become a billionaire. Um They've come up with a way that instead of guys that have splits, those are the lower tier guys or guys that don't have much leverage that they put splits into. Now we're talking about top tier guys that they're, what they're doing is they're giving them roster bonuses saying, let's put this money in a roster bonus. But instead of it, roster bonuses used to be if you're on the 53 man roster on June 1, you're going to get paid your, let's say, $1.6 million roster bonus. Now what they're doing is they're taking that $1.6 million roster bonus and they're saying, if you're on the active 46-man roster, so 53 are on the on the total roster, but only 46 dress. So seven are sitting out because either they're injured or even skill. So it makes it much more competitive. So what happens is you've got the uh, this roster bonus sitting out there at 1.6 million. If you're not on an active roster, 
you lose a hundred thousand dollars a game you know wow. 1.6 divided by 16 he's getting a hundred thousand dollars per game that he's active he rolls an ankle and misses three games he just lost 300 <laughs> So, so this is something that, that it just baffled me that I didn't even know existed until I was having conversations with guys about the split contracts. And they're like, Nick, but I've got this roster bonus. If you, if you, could, if you guys could build something like this to protect this, I'm, I'm in. And guess what? So we went back, we, we, t- we spoke and, and created the policy, and, and sure enough, it's been, it's been actually a great, a great asset to be able to help these guys protect. Last year alone, $21 million dollars was lost it's just amazing when you, i mean it, it, it's amazing when you really think about that and you put those numbers uh in perspective i got two more quickies for you first of all uh, now is this still under the nfl umbrella uh, umbrella or is this a separate entity what you guys are doing pfs no, this is a separate entity this is a, a pfs was was created or started in 1980 um as a family owned business and and operating in a real niche market um within sports and we've been around for 36 plus years. We are our biggest, uh, you know, clients are the NFL, Major League Baseball, um, the NFL teams, the leagues themselves. And then, you know, I'm I'm really focused on growing the individual space. You know, being a former athlete, being a former player, and, and really having a great desire to say, guess what? When I played, these these probably these policies were not available to help me protect sure. myself. They are now, and I'm trying to create the awareness for it. And I, and I appreciate your time allowing me to come on, Rich. And, no, no, and no. Speak it, about this because. You talk about the split contracts, that's $25 million. Roster bonuses, that's $21 million. That's $46 million of a $143 million cap. Like, that's a third of the money gone. And, and you know, the sad thing, too, is when you think about it, when we talk about over the years, you know, the players that came before you guys, uh, you know, the gridiron greats and what they're doing and, and helping all the players, when someone sees that lost money somewhere, I mean, I'm sure eyes will roll. I'm just wondering, um, uh, how has this been received by the league? I, I haven't taken well. I haven't taken it to the league other than I was actually trying to take it to the player development group, yep. um, Charles Way and yep. the player engagement. Sure, former giant. Yep. You know, let me, let me, yeah, former giant. He was actually my player development guy when I was there, and I said, you know, Charles, let me, let me get this to your your player development guys. Let me get it in the hands of just in front of these guys. And I'm like, you know, take my name off. Take take the, you know, a good conflict of interest. You know how that works in the NFL. Sure. They, they want to make sure that now there's some kind of uh, they don't want to be sued because something goes wrong with it. So. There, that was a negative kind of thought about that, about getting in front of the players. And, and so I'm kind of going the route of going to player reps on different teams. Yep. So if they understand it, I've gone to the NFLPA. I'm trying to get them to, to sit down with me to say, hey, let's, let's explore this as, a, as an NFLPA to say, guess what? The league has got 58% of this have a split in our contract. Why, why can't we buy this as a whole union and protect every single guy that has a split? Yeah, and uh, it's it's it, it, it's a. I mean, honestly, it's it's a great idea because you're 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 recouping losses that, again, you you don't want to see these players lose uh, the money, especially if they were to go down. So it's it's a great way to protect them. I'm just curious as as, as we close it out. I, I kind of want to just throw you a curveball on one thing. You played the linebacker position. You played it in college. You played it in the pros. We are seeing uh, concussions at an alarming rate in the league and we're seeing younger players decide okay enough is enough uh, I'm going to retire I made some money um, I don't want to go through this anymore I don't want to have to deal with the aftermaths of a concussion or 10 15 20 years down the road have to deal with this um, I- I'm just wondering do, do you see a time where more and more stars in the NFL um, will turn around maybe after four or five years, even if their their careers in if it's in infancy and just say, you know what, it's just not worth the risk anymore. I do. I, I think that's definitely going to be the case. I think really it, it comes down to, I think because of the amount of money guys are being, being paid. I think that's, that's number one. They're able to make that decision because, you know, you know Patrick Willis made, you know, 50, $60 million and he can walk away. Um, and they're, and they're better educated. You know the, the 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 generations that came before us have really, and social media has really helped the ability to tell their story, and media has helped to tell their story, and I think that has also affected guys. But um, you know, for the reason that they want to get out. But you know, I'll tell you, I've done a lot of work for the past four years with USA Football and their Heads Up Football program. Yep. yep. And the education of player safety coaches in, at the youth level, I think, has become a 
uh, it's just kind of like the gold standard that you know it, we're we're trying to change the culture of youth sports. We're trying to change the culture of football that we 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 don't go oohs and ahs about big hits. We we go and cheer for great hustle and great play and great competitiveness. But you know trying to make sure we take care of each other and the education part of parents and, and coaches understanding what a concussion is and that you don't return to play until you're symptom free and I think that, that that was something that was entirely missed obviously you saw it in the concussion movie the guys sure. were playing and, oh you got your bell rung you, you know, got some cobwebs <laughs> in your, your brain you're fine get out there be a man be a tough guy and um, you know one other thing I, that I've gotten into as well is is this new this new product um, that's out there for youth organizations called Players Health, and it's a web-based health record that parents create and is shared with the organization. So every coach, every trainer is able to document every single injury and keep track of this. And so this is a great way for coaches to understand. Okay, because kids play multiple sports. Sure. Yeah. Two, absolutely. Three, four sports, and say, okay, all right. Well, Johnny got hurt at, at at football. All right, he may not be all right for soccer. And, you know, because right. they do multiple sports or swimming or he's got a concussion. And it's a great way for parents and organizations to not only you know, communicate, but then also for an organization to make sure a child is protected and is not being put on a field when he's not ready. So it's really it's given the parents the opportunity or the chance to say, here's the, the return to play protocol that you know, we need in place. Yeah. And end of the day, especially with the high school kids, it's all about the safety. And of course, for the pros, you got to protect them on uh, and off the field as well. Um, Nick, greatly appreciate the time. Um, you know, wish you the best of luck. You got an open invite anytime you want to come back on the show. And uh, I think it's a good thing, especially for the younger players, because like you alluded to, uh, protecting the assets and, and whatnot. Is there is there any site or uh, anywhere people, if, um you know, any, any players out there uh, or if people want to be more educated on this, any website they can go and check things out? Or is this something where you're just kind of making the rounds right now? No, no, there's, there's, uh, we actually, we're under construction on, of our website, but there's places that you can go. It's, it's pfsins.com. Um, you can get all the information on kind of what we're doing now and all the numbers, uh, phone numbers, emails. If you have any questions, go ahead and, and give us a call or, or shoot us an email and we'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. Nick, appreciate the time, pal. Look forward to talking again. Rich, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You got it. Be well. Nick Rice in a couple minutes with him. Eight year pro in the NFL.